Hello, here is a JavaScript code for System.io courses. If you have made a course, and especially if you want to make it easy for your students to click this button named marked as complete so that they click this button so that the progression bar on the left will go up and up until they reach 100%. And at this point, you can have an automation which deliver automatically uh, a certificate an image with their name and date on it and send them the certificate by email automatically once they have reached 100%. But for this to happen, they need to click on the button marked as complete. And this button, you can find it at the bottom of the each lesson. The problem is, for instance, me in my course in French, uh, before the end, I put a comment, Facebook comment. So it's very long. And at the very end, you have this famous button here it's called next because I already marked as complete this lesson. So the button is now next, but it's at the very bottom. So students don't click on it. What we want is to put it at the top. And you can see in effect, for instance, the next lesson. Here you can see the check mark. Check mark means this lesson has been marked as complete. But when there is no check mark, it, mean, it means this lesson has not been marked as complete. So what happens if I go next and, and I go to the lesson, which is not marked as complete next. And you will see now the button is at the top marked as complete. And the next lesson also is not complete. So the next one, you can see it will show the button marked as complete. So it's very obvious for the student. They can click it and it will increase their progress bar. And the next lesson has been marked as complete. So if I click next, nothing happens, you know, and the button next is at the bottom as it was always intended by System.io. So really, this script is just to make this change. So if I click previews, oh, you guessed it, mark as complete. Previews, again, mark as complete. But the previous one is not marked as complete. I mean, it has been marked as complete, so nothing happens. Okay, so wonderful. Now, go to the script. It's in the settings of the course. Yeah, you have a box where you can put. And uh, here you see I put comments. So from this to here, this is a function that uh, you just have to copy and paste in your own course settings. What it does here, uh, line number five, is just to set an interval so that this function will be called every two seconds. That's why we have 2,000 oh, uh, milliseconds. So here you can put 1,000 or 5,000, doesn't matter. It's just it will do it every here, two seconds. Why I choose this one? Because two seconds uh, is not uh, very often in computer terms. Huh? Uh, two seconds, okay. And what it does, this function is not very intensive. So it's like it's not here, but two seconds it will check. And what it does here, there is an if, so that, you know, I put an if and two conditions. But the first one, and here it's separated with the end. So the first one is just to check if this marked as complete button exists. Because in the case of lessons which has already been marked as complete, this button doesn't exist. So it will just stop here and finish the, the function and be called again in two seconds. And so it's really light. But if it exists, now we have to check also if we have not already moved this button. So that's the second part of the of this script, of this condition. And if it, hasn't, if it has not been moved, then we are going to move it. And that's what it does here. So you can read it. You don't need to understand it. There is one specific thing in uh, those two lines here. This is just because uh, I will show you. Not very important, but it's uh, because once when the button is at the bot the button is at the bottom of the page, you have a space here, and this space is a margin at the top of this element, the white background, because the button here is inside another element. And this element has a margin at the top. So if we move this element at the, at the top, we want the margin to be at the bottom in order to separate. So I will show you, I click next and next. Okay, so now the margin is at the bottom of this element. So you understand, because we, we put it at the top, we need to switch the margin from top to bottom. So that's what it does here, those two lines. And then it put it at the top. So the next, in the next two seconds, when it will uh, check again the condition, the first one will be true because it exists, but the second one will be false because we have already moved the button. So it will not execute again this move. 
So really, this function doesn't strain the computer because it's only every two seconds, and the function itself has a mechanism to to make it very light, not to do it stupidly every two seconds. And even if it doesn't exist, have errors. No, it checks. If it doesn't exist, do nothing because the person already has marked as complete this lesson. But if it's still here, then we move it one one time, and that's it. The next time it will just check it, check it, and never do it again until it changes. So now to finish, why why I do it like this? Why it's so complicated? It's because of the way the system I/O courses uh, interface is made. Before, because now it's new and it's better improved. But before it was simple. Uh, you had a one page, a script. You could check everything and do it if needed. Otherwise, do nothing. And when the, the student change the lesson, the page loads again, uh, and so you can run your scripts once. But now, now it doesn't happen like this. Now all the interface is dynamic. So when you click on the next button to go to the next lesson, you think that the page has changed, but in fact it has been updated dynamically. And even the address, the URL of the lesson in the browser navigation bar, address bar, is also changed. But this is all done with JavaScript. Yeah, the page doesn't change, so the scripts that you do need to be dynamic as well and needs to check check the state of the page um, with an interval. So I think two seconds is fine for human being. Uh, doesn't matter. You need to check the state state of the page and make changes if needed because this page can change. So the conditions that are false now may become true later in time, and uh, the page will still be the same. So that's why we need to do it like this now because things have changed, so you need to change also the, the way to do the script for the course interface. This is not the case for the tunnel funnel pages, you know, in System.io or other things. It's specific to the course area of System.io. It has been improved, so we need to, uh, to be aware and to do the scripts like this also. That's it for this video. Bye-bye.